Now it's uh, 8.13, it's Friday morning and it's a busy weekend. The Premier League is back and uh, delighted to say Liverpool legend Phil Thompson joins us on the line. Morning to you, Phil. Good morning, guys. We Good might... morning to you. We'll we'll come... The Premier League's back. Yeah, yeah. You're not, you, 10 you... mils, 5 mils. <laughs> you're on it well it could be we'll see what happens at the weekend before we get into the, the Arsenal game we wanted to ask you obviously Stevie G big uh, talking point over the last few weeks he's done his first press conference now I presume are you still at that level of contact where you can send him a good luck and strong arm oh, emoji yeah. yeah very much and uh, Gary McAllister and uh, there's other staff members um, being quite close to them uh, and it I think it's a really good job for Stevie um, I thought you'd done absolutely fantastic at Rangers. I, I thought that was a tough job when he went up there and he turned it around quicker than what I thought he would do. He brought success. He changed the dynamic, obviously, with Celtic winning everything. And I think Aston Villa has come along just at the right time for him, just the right club. It's not one of those sort of big sort of six clubs, as we like to call them. So I think Aston Villa is just right there. It's still a difficult and a tough job, but I think it's, it's just right for Stevie. Mm. And for now, all the conversation tends to be dominated by, isn't he ultimately going to Liverpool? I mean, ca can't it coexist, Phil, that he's wants to go into Villa, make a great success of it, and it's absolutely fine to think that at some point down the track he wants to move on to a bigger club? You can, you, you can think of that. Um, that. That is obviously going to be in everybody's mind. But as I've said to a few people, there's no guarantees that liver. Everybody just thinks that is uh, the, the the step which is Stevie's going to take. What happens if Jurgen Klopp? You know, I know Stevie said he signs a contract for life, but what happens if he signs a new contract now? On well, Stevie's lifespan at sort of Villa, no matter how good he does, how bad he does, will not sort of transpire that way. So Jurgen Klopp might sign a new contract that might not come round to Stevie. People's minds were just going, Jürgen Klopp, Klopp leaves, Stevie Gerrard steps up. It might never be that way. So Stevie has to look after himself. He has to do what's right for his career. And I think this this opportunity has come along just at the right time. His uh, interview for the Village job lasted five hours. Christian Perslow said it was an outstanding interview involving a PowerPoint presentation. Gerard telling them how he wants to implement this possession style of football with Aston Villa. How successful do you think that style can be with a team who are in the bottom half of the Premier League? Well, I, I think he's got to mix things up. He's got to make sure that that's tough to beat. Um, Stevie's team, obviously, up at uh, Rangers has got to be mainly attacking because most of the games you're going to have most of the ball. You've got to do things like that. At Aston Villa at the moment, two points above the relegation zone, you know, you've, you've got to think not all defensively. You've got to make sure you have. You're going to be hard to beat because you start picking up a few goals, the wins then will fall. If you're getting beat all the time, you're playing nice, attractive football, you're getting beat. 3-2, everybody said, oh, yeah, but it's the type of football. No, it's not. Fans like to see winning football, and I think that is the only way that Stevie, and as he said, it's coming up the first game against Brighton. They have to hit the ground running and make sure that they start winning games. And it, it's not all going to be about flair. That will come. You've got to have an idea, and I think Stevie in a PowerPoint presentation will, will look at all aspects of the game not just, you know, oh, it's lovely and it's attacking football the way he's played it, it at Rangers. Mm. W one of the things that uh, stuck out to me from reading Stephen Gerrard this week is what he had to say about Gerard Houllier. Obviously, the connection there with, with Aston Villa and with Liverpool. He paid tribute to him uh, and said he'd be forever in debt to him in terms of how he looked after him, the communication with his parents, uh, and uh, Gerard, I guess, making that step up to be a top class footballer. What, what was your recollection of, of that period when, when Houllier, I guess, was moulding Gerrard into this player? Well, it, Gerard Hilly had a massive impact on, on Stevie's sort of lifestyle in what he did, as we've heard with the likes of Jamie Carragher. Um, he, he, Hulia was always looking in depth, and people who just weren't looking at the footballer, they were looking at uh, the, the, the family, the lifestyle, how they, um, how they looked after themselves. And my text to Stevie after he, he'd won the league at, at Rangers was, the boss would be absolutely so proud of you. Um, and, I, and I think he would do because he's he's given him all those aspects. He, he looks seriously about the game and that's the way Gerard Toulier, he, he 
in-depth view of his football, but he had a nice human touch to it. So it's great being a football manager. You can be one of one of the tough ones. You can be one of the soft ones. I think you've got to be somewhere in between. And I think Stevie will have learned not just off Gerard Tulli, off all the people that he's been with. You can take the good and the bad from it. And I think it's very important. It's lovely. I didn't know that he'd spoken about uh, Gerard. Um, and I think that is is very nice. But Gerard had a massive impact on his on his football and career. I think it will have an impact on his managerial career. Because I think so much, and you'll understand it, Phil, from coaching at the Premier League. So much of it about of it is about outside of the tactical and selections bit about your demeanour and your attitude and your like. He, he comes across as a very intense character. I suppose maybe is the way to put it. it how does that marry with the intensity and the spotlight have been in, uh, albeit as you say, not a top four or six job, but a big Premier League position now. I know Stevie comes across with that demeanour of, of his, but Stevie does love a laugh. He does love a giggle. And I think you've got to have that part of it. Football should be about fun and enjoyment. And that's the that's the way of it. And he, he will know that. Um, and he's got to be extremely serious about it. The tactics, you're quite right, have to come into it. To be a top manager with the likes of your Jürgen Klopp's and your and your Pep Guardiola's, they are so intense. That's why these guys don't sort of last at one club for too long. And Stevie will throw himself into that. So tactically, he's got to be right. Um, formations, he's got to make sure he knows rotation of players now is so important. A lot a lot more different uh, in the Premier League than in the, um, the Scottish Premiership. So I think Stevie will get that right. He does know, as he said, he's missed the Premier League, the intensity of the Premier League. And I think he, he will enjoy it when he gets into it. I think he'll find it a lot tougher than what he's probably even thinking at this moment because of, it, dare I say, Villa's predicament with the relegation zone. So, yes, it's going to be tough, but I think he will uh, enjoy it. Yeah, it's going to be a fascinating watch for the rest of us as well. Um, Liverpool Arsenal this weekend, Phil. I'd, following on from the the West Ham game, it's always hard to know if it's better from a Liverpool point of view to have been straight back into it, or if they've you know it's been a positive thing for them almost to have been stewing over this uh, for the last couple of weeks. No, I, I would rather have had another game straight after would you? it and make sure you get sort of back on the bike. Um, this is. <laughs> You, you just hope with the game before that, the Brighton game, drawing that, and then having the um, the the game against. I know we've had the the European game, but it's just you you want to sort of get back into it straight away and have that sort of the Premier League is coming, and it's it's a massive game. Arsenal is always one of the big games, always one of the big attractions um, in the Anfield calendar, and it's it's proved quite fruitful for Liverpool over the over the past. So um I think it is really sort of welcome at, at this this time. Coming back to Anfield, I think Liverpool will be ready for it. Mm. Arsenal probably going, well we could have done without Liverpool getting beaten the last match because they're gonna be absolutely even more up for it. Yeah. Well, what area is concerning you most about Liverpool at the moment if you if you had to pick one? Well like, uh, without being a tactical genius, I think the set plays uh um Obviously, a, a bit of a worry the way uh, people surround her. And I don't care what anybody will say, whether I'm sort of looking uh, through blinkers or not. I still believe that the, the, the two goals that Alisson was responsible, he should have done better with them. But Antonio, Lord Bonner actually pushes him underneath the ball. You can see where his arm goes into him. And then the other one, Antonio's doing exactly the same. Ashley Barnes of Burnley Syndrome standing in front, making no attempt to go for the ball and is literally impeding um, Alisson. He's got his arms there to stop him actually moving. That is not legal, <laughs> I don't, in any form. But I think that is the area where you would be um, sort of concerned. And my goodness, dare I say, if, if Arsenal have, haven't been doing the homework, they will do exactly the same um, and surround Alisson um, tomorrow. They've been good at set pieces so far this season. Arsenal, I think they've like, a couple of games into the season they've already out uh, outperformed their goals from set pieces in the total of, of last year. Are, are they still flaky, Phil? Arsenal, or is it still going to take a little bit more time to, to prove to prove that they're not? 
they, they've had a great run, haven't they? They've un, un, been unbeaten in ten games in all comps, unbeaten in eight in the in the Premier League. But they're, they're still away from home. You know, they've only scored three goals, which will be concerning uh, Mikel Arteta. Only Norwich have can see uh, of um, they've scored only two away from home. So it it will be a concern for him in how you turn around that. But listen, Arteta is still in that stage where, yes, he can be flaky at the back. But again, it's what we were saying about Stevie, Stevie Gerrard. You know, if you can sort out your defence, and I don't think he's got that completely right, at least it gives you chances in games. Um, and he's, he's done that, Mikel Arteta. I always believe that he should be uh, given a bit more time. He does seem a good coach. But he's got to get his basics right uh, in between. This, as I say, has been very fruitful um, uh, for Liverpool. He's scored lots of goals in these games. And I'm, I'm hoping, as a Liverpool fan, that it continues tomorrow. Yeah, and maybe another area of concern, concession, obviously, goals that we've mentioned, uh, concerns at the back, a couple of injuries around the middle as well, Phil. I don't know if that's the root of some of it, but I know that he's gone for nine different midfield combinations across the course of the season, some to do with injury, some to do with form. Like, is there also a point where they're feeling the pinch of Wijnaldum's loss now, or do you see it slightly differently? And, and uh, yeah, you'll, you'll, Wijnaldum, I always thought was a fantastic footballer, a great footballer, and you will. It, but Ginny Wijnaldum was always going to leave Liverpool, and I told that to lots of people 18 months before they all the words that were coming out from mm. him. I said, it's all the words of somebody who's running the contract down, and it doesn't matter what Liverpool were going to offer him. So the Ginny Wijnaldum thing is gone, done, dusted. Now I think we have our midfield, which is now the equivalent to what we had at the back last year, the injuries are piling up. We're getting down to the bare bones of it. All start with um, the unfortunate injury to Harvey Elliott. And then Cater just seems to be injured all the time. Um, you can't rely upon saying Milner should be fit. I would like to think Jordan Henderson it was just protection of an injury. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that he, as he was training, but not with all the squad in the last couple, couple of days. Um, Thiago hopefully should be sort of should be back but well, it is to get down to the bare, bare bones um, in that area and it is as you said as well which which is the best functioning three in there and I think that is going to be important as well is what, getting that what's, your, trying what's your view on that? Your... Sorry? What is the best functioning three? Well the best functioning three I, I I, I think at this moment in time, um, if the fit, I think it's if you get the likes of James Milner, I know he's, he's a lot older, Henderson, on but those two on both sides of Fabinho um, in the centre, because Fabinho does give that protection to the back two, and the energy of the other two can go about and set patterns and close and down. Um, I always feel like at the moment that is Liverpool's best three. You'd be amazed because you're saying um, no Thiago in there. I still think he's. He, it takes him, from what I've seen of him at Liverpool, it takes him maybe five or six games before he's actually up to speed when he comes back in games. So Milner is normally super fit and he's quite simply, he gets into my team. Yeah. Like I mean, one of the other things, obviously, is the this thing of and you mentioned the Brighton game a bit earlier, but dropping points from winning positions in a way that just hasn't been Liverpool. Certainly in the title winning season, they've already overshot they've they've um, overshot their record for the entire season already this season. Uh, if you compare it to a couple of years ago, um, twice in front against City, obviously it didn't last long. You mentioned the Brighton game as well. Uh, Almost from an opposition point of view, Phil, if you're playing Liverpool now in a way that previously it would have been with Liverpool get ahead and they're going to kill us from here no matter what happens. And it's not the mindset now of the opponents. No, well, it's... It, it's a lot of teams are, li are like that. They'll set up. And normally if you went to goal ahead, other teams it's would uh, uh, break break out and try to sort of change and, and, and go and try and get something back in the game. Now they go, no, at 1-0, let's just sit there. Let, let's be sort of quite happy with this. Even at 2-0, some teams uh, just sit back. So this seems to be the way. Listen, Brighton were a very good team and worked their way back into into that game against Liverpool. And, and probably, listen, I was happy <laughs> for the 90-plus minutes that, that were up because if anybody was going to score, it was going to be Brighton. It was a concern. 
And I think I think that is an area also for, for Jürgen that he needs to look at. Is we played some wonderful football, some great stuff in the early part of the games. We absolutely blew Brighton away. Some fantastic football. But at certain times, and I don't want to get back to that position where you actually need three goals to be comfortable, mm. um, is, is that we have to put these uh, teams to bed. We have to make sure we, we do take our chances. But also more concentration at the back and we do, do not get sloppy. Yeah, and uh, I mean, the only way to do all of that is obviously get a few results in the pitch and, and earn all that stuff out. We'll see how that how that unfolds. Uh, Arsenal very settled. What's your expectation then, Phil, for, for that well, game? I, I, I do think, and with sort of Liverpool enjoying this fixture, I do expect Liverpool to win. And with Arsenal only scoring three away goals, I would hope that Liverpool will keep it clean sheets as well, guys. Yeah. Can I ask you one quick one before we let you away? There's been a lot of chat about uh, Brendan Rodgers and United. Maybe increased. Uh, it's been increased over the last while. Uh, he said that he's fully committed to Leicester. It did sort of remind me of the Stevie G comment just before he left Rangers that you know, do I not look settled? Um, you know, so there could be a little bit of that. But that notwithstanding, a good fit for United. I think he'd be a very good fit for United. Um, I really do. He's a very very good coach. And I, I listen, and I know what Brendan is. Brendan will be saying to Manchester United, look, I'm not putting my head on the chopping block and saying, um, oh, yes, I'm interested in... If you're interested in me, you'll be interested when you come and you're giving me the job. And then I'll put my head above the parapet and go, well, thank you very much. It's one of the biggest jobs in the world. Mm. And you cannot just turn it down. But at the moment, if I'm only in it with another six people, sorry, I'm quite happy at Leicester City. It would leave a bad taste, would it, in Liverpool fans' mouths? Well, I, I don't think he was ever committed, was he? I mean, as a Liverpool fan, he did fantastic for Liverpool. Absolutely brilliant. I don't think it'll be that same thing as Rafa Benitez going to um, mm. going to Everton after what Rafa Benitez uh, did. But, um, no, Brendan Rodgers, I wish him the best of luck. I think he's a fantastic coach. He's a really good guy. And I think he'll, he'll do really well for Manchester United. Yeah. All right, Phil Thompson. Thanks, a million. My pleasure, guys. Take care. Thanks a lot, as always. Phil Thompson on the line there, looking ahead to the game of the weekend. Plenty of interesting stuff to say as well. Besides, on what are you thinking? It's you were hinting at earlier on, but uh, Arsenal have a great chance, don't they? Uh, I, I mean, I, I'm not sure about that. Like, I mean, it's a, um, as I said, it will be like a, a pretty significant staging point where they to actually get something from this game tomorrow. But I'm not, I'm not sure it will necessarily happen. Like, Anfield has been a very, very bad place for them, like a, a place of nightmares for Arsenal over the last couple of years.